Welcome back to part six of our series where we are building the TD Ameritrade API client for Python. So in our last couple of videos, we pretty much primarily focused entirely on uh, authentication. And so again, long portion, but it's a really important one because if you can't authenticate yourself, you don't understand how the authentication process is working, it's kind of really hard to understand like what this library is doing behind the scenes. Um, and so uh, hopefully by watching that, you now kind of have a good idea of what's going on and how it's doing it and how you can leverage it. I did want to point out one little thing because of course I missed something. Um, so for the token refresh method, um, for whatever reason, I didn't put access type offline you do need access type offline in order to get a refresh token. So the endpoint does expect the argument access type and it does expect the value of offline in order to successfully get a refresh token. Otherwise, um, if you do this, you'll get a key error saying like, hey, there's no refresh token because it makes a successful request, but it only returns an access token. We don't want an access token, we want a refresh token. All right, so what are we gonna do in this video? Well, we're gonna start discussing endpoints. And so we're going to start off with a simple endpoint. We're going to talk about the get quotes endpoints. And the reason I'm starting out with this one is A, it's simple, and B, it gives us an opportunity to uh, see one of the functions that I built. And so um, it, that's all we're going to kind of be covering in this video. I was going to cover some other ones, but then I realized that I think the code might be a little bit messed up at a certain point. It works for most cases, but there's another case where I'm like, I don't think that's going to work. So I have to do a little bit more fine tuning for that particular uh, validation function. So let's get started. Alrighty. So with this particular one, we are going to do the get quotes endpoint. And so we're going to create a new method called get quotes. We will have it do self, we'll do instruments, and then we will uh, default it to none to begin with. So now that we've done that, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, honestly, this is not too crazy. Um, the first thing we wanna do is validate the token. And so we're gonna call self.token validation. So this is just calling this method right up above. All this is gonna do is it's gonna ask a simple question. If your token is about to expire in less than five seconds, then go get a refresh token as long as you have refresh enabled set to true. So if it's less than five seconds old and you have refresh enabled set equal to true, then go get a refresh token. If that's successful, then you should be still fully authenticated. And if it's not, it's gonna walk you through the entire uh, authentication process again, but it shouldn't as long as everything's set up correctly. Uh, then from there, we're gonna be building a request. And so a part of our request is gonna be the headers. And so the headers serves as a mechanism to validate who we are to the TD Ameritrade API. So here we're going to build the headers and really all we're doing is we are going to create a new variable called merged headers and that will be self and then we're gonna call the headers uh, method. And so if I scroll right up here to the top, you'll see it's right here. And so all it's gonna do is it's gonna grab our access token and it's gonna store it in a dictionary where there's a key called authorization and there's a value with the string bearer, a space, and then it's gonna be our access token right there. And so it's gonna return that dictionary back to us when we're making our request. All right, so now that we have our headers, we can move on to the next part. We're gonna define our instruments. So in the particular endpoint that we're using, the get quotes endpoint, um, it expects something called an instrument. And so we can pass through multiple instruments, but in this particular example, let's just start off by taking a single element from a list. And then from there, I will show you how we can build it to take and handle multiple items in a list. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna grab some additional data. And this is just to save some time and help us avoid typos. Uh, our particular endpoint does also expect some parameters. The, there are two parameters. There is API key and symbol. Symbol is just gonna come from our instruments that we did up here. 
And then our API key, well, you don't have to worry about that. That's in the client object itself. So that will be populated for you. You don't have to pass it through. And then additionally, each one of our requests is gonna be going towards a certain endpoint. And so in all of our requests, we will be defining a variable called endpoint. This endpoint points to the endpoint that we want to make the request to inside the TD Ameritrade API. So for the get quotes endpoint, it's forward slash market data forward slash quotes. Now, this as it is right now is not a valid URL. So we have to build the rest of our URL. So we're gonna build the URL and we're gonna create a new variable, call it URL, we're gonna call self, and we have a method called API endpoint. And so the self uh, dot API endpoint is right up here. And all this is doing is it's gonna create a valid URL for us. And so it's gonna take our resource URL, which is just basically the, um, the API URL, the API version, it's gonna add forward slash, and then it's gonna pass through our endpoint, just like that. All right, and then once that valid URL has been built, we can make our request. Now, to be honest, I'll probably change this a little bit, but just for the time being, I'm fine with the way it is. We're gonna do a get request, we're gonna do URL, our URL is gonna be the URL that we built up above. Our headers will be the merged headers that we defined up above. And then we're gonna have params argument. Well, that's just gonna equal the data we defined up above. And we're gonna to wanna to make sure we do a verified request. So we're gonna make sure and set that equal to true. And then also, if it was the successful request, we are gonna get a JSON string sent back to us. So we wanna call the JSON method to parse that JSON string and convert it into a Python dictionary that we can then easily access the keys and values of it. Now, to be completely honest, uh, honestly, I would not do it like this. I would probably have something like if, you know, response dot status code was 200, then returned the uh, particular JSON string, um, otherwise, if it's like an error code or something like that, and I know that that particular error code is going to return a JSON string, then I'll still return it back. Otherwise, raise a value error. So again, it really depends. I'll probably modify this some more, but I shouldn't assume that I'm always going to get a successful request back. And so it's kind of bad that I wrote it like this, but you know, for right now, I'm okay with it. But on the code that I'm going to post to GitHub, you're not going to be seeing this. Alrighty, let's see if it works. Hopefully it works. All right, so we have a session that we've logged into. So we're gonna create a new variable. We'll call it quote data. We will grab our session object. And then hopefully now we should see a method called get quotes. This one takes a named argument called instruments. And in this case, I wanna pass through my single symbol. Now, you don't technically have to have this right here, but I think for readability, it's a little bit easier. So it's up to you if you wanna do that or not. So hopefully that was a successful request. If it was, let's print that data. Quote, data. All righty. So let's run our Python file and see what we get. Looks good to me. All right, so it looks like we got our JSON string back. It was parsed and we see all the wonderful data that's related to Microsoft. So in this example, we were doing a single symbol, but the get quotes endpoint definitely can handle more than one symbol. So we need to modify it a little bit so that way we can handle multiple symbols. Well, what I mean by multiple symbols is I mean, if you pass through a list of symbols, I wanna be able to take that list, modify it, so that way I can pass it through to the API. Now the API does request that it be a single string of concatenated symbols so that are separated by a comma. Now, what I did to make that process of building that list a little bit easier and consistent, what I've done is I've created a function. And all this function does is it's really simple. It takes, oh, no, nope, not like that. That's why I have to be careful when I paste it, sometimes it doesn't indent it correctly. So the prepare arguments list takes one argument. It's just a list of arguments, or sorry, a list of parameters or whatever you wanna call it. 
and I initialize that to none. And it's gonna take that list. It's gonna first check if it's a list. Um, and if it is, I'm oh, sorry, this didn't get indented too. Um, it's gonna then define a delimiter. So in this case, it's a comma. And it's gonna join that list into a single string where each element in that list is separated by that delimiter that we defined up above. And so this will create a single string of all the symbols that are separated by a comma. I might modify this a little bit more because for example, if you don't pass through a list, maybe I wanna raise an error or something like that. But at this point, this is all it's doing. So it might change a little bit, but for right now, if it's a list, it will define that delimiter. It will join the list by that delimiter and then it's gonna return that single string. And so what I'm gonna do next is now that I've done that, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna say self prepare arguments list. I have a parameter list and I just know that's instruments. And so it's gonna do everything we need here. And then for visual purposes, I will print it out. Normally it won't print it out, but for right now, I'm okay with that. So now what I wanna do is I wanna pass through multi-symbol. Multi-symbol. And hopefully, everything's good to go. Perfect, so it looks like we got square. Um, there's a lot. <laughs> Microsoft, Google, and I'm sure Apple, yeah, Apple's in here somewhere right there. So it looks like everything went through great. And then also the cool part is now you can see that it created that nice little string for you. So that way you don't have to worry about it. You can just pass me through a list and it will handle that list just the way you need it to. So that's the first endpoint. Um, that's the simple one. <laughs> There's a couple more coming, but I'll save that for a later video because I, I still have to do some more testing on it. Um, the next one would be the search instruments endpoint, and then I'm going to try to do the get options chain endpoint uh, in the, the same video. Hopefully, there's no issues with it. Every time I try to do it, I try doing it, and then I'm like, oh, there's an error, or oh, there's that. So I try to make sure that it's correct, but, you know, of course, the error never happens until I'm recording the video, naturally. But at this point, at least you have one of the endpoints, and then really for any of them that require a single argument, the logic is really the same. And, and honestly, multiple arguments too. I mean, it, you, I can kind of show you what you pretty much need to do for most of them. Um, you know, it, if there's multiple arguments, you just define multiple named arguments. And the only really thing that I would be adding to it is I'm gonna try to validate those arguments for you. Um, other than that, it's just building the necessary um, payload that you need to, uh, defining this, specific requests. So they're not all get requests. Some are post requests, some are uh, delete requests, some are patch requests. They're all over the place. But the idea is relatively the same. You have a bunch of arguments, you pass through those arguments. If they need to be validated and can be validated, then try and validate them, make the request, return the response to the user. And uh, it's usually a JSON string, so you don't have to worry about anything. Um, obviously some requests are a little bit more complicated than other ones. And for those really complicated ones, I'm trying to build some objects that make it a little bit easier to work with them. But yeah, that's really in essence a, a simple request. And like I said, unless they're really complicated ones, should be good to go. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down below and try to get back to you and all that kind of fun stuff. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video.